Today, the CPI number wang continues. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, one that is post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, rose 1.8% in the June 2022 quarter and 6.1% annually, according to the latest data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Annually, the CPI rose 6.1% with new dwellings up 20.3% and automotive fuel up 32.1%. They were the most significant contributors. The annual rise in the CPI is the largest since the introduction of the goods and services tax. And annual price inflation for new dwellings was the strongest recorded since the series commenced in 1999, said the ABS. Non-discretionary goods and services rose 1.8% through the quarter, and 7.6% through the year. That's a very important number because that's stuff you've got to spend. Whereas discretionary goods and services rose 1.7% through the quarter and 4% through the year. And the ABS said the quarterly increase of 1.8% was the second highest since the introduction of the goods and services tax, following on from a 2.1% increase last quarter. The most significant contributors to the rise in the June quarter CPI were new dwellings up 5.6% and automotive fuel up 4.2%. New dwellings prices recorded their largest annual rise since the series commenced in June 1999. And price rises continue to be driven by high levels of building construction activity combined with ongoing shortages of materials and labour. Fewer payments of government construction grants compared to the previous quarter also contributed to the rise this quarter. These grants have the effect of reducing out-of-pocket expenses for new dwelling purchases. Shortages of building supplies and labour, high freight costs and ongoing high levels of construction activity continue to contribute to price rises for newly built dwellings. Fewer grant payments made this quarter from the federal government's Home Builder program and similar state-based housing construction programs also contributed to the rise, they said. And rents in Sydney and Melbourne have recorded rises for the second consecutive quarter, with price rises driven by both houses and other dwellings, which includes flats and townhouses. Rents across the remaining capital cities have recorded a faster recovery in rental price growth compared to Sydney and Melbourne. These cities continue to record strong price rises in the June quarter 2022, with increases in rent seen for both houses and other dwellings, reflecting historically low vacancy rates, they said. The CPI's automotive fuel series reached a record level for the fourth consecutive quarter. Automotive fuel prices rose for the eighth consecutive quarter and price pressures continue to flow through to consumers following an oil price shock caused by the Russian invasion of Ukraine last quarter coupled with ongoing easing of COVID-19 restrictions, strengthening global demand. While a cut in the fuel excise of 22 cents per litre on the 30th of March 2022 resulted in fuel price falls in April, price rises were seen in May and June, and the average unleaded fuel price in the month of June surpassed the previous record high monthly averages seen in March. The prices of goods, which were up 2.6%, continued to rise more strongly than that of services, which was up 0.6% over the quarter. And notable rises were recorded across the food group up 2%, and furnishings, household equipment, and services groups up 2.5%. Main contributors to the rise in food prices include vegetables up 7.3%, meals out and takeaway foods up 1.4%, and fruit up 3.7%. Supply chain disruptions due to flooding events, labour shortages and rising freight costs contributed to higher prices. And furniture prices rose 7% due to increased transport and material costs and stock shortages. Services recorded a smaller rise compared to goods. Financial services though were up 1.2% and holiday travel and accommodation were up 2.3%. But childcare dropped 7.3%. Now that fell as the full effect of additional childcare subsidies for families with two or more children under the age of six, which commenced on the 7th of March, flowed through into this quarter. And before and after school care vouchers offered by the New South Wales Government also contributed to the fall in childcare costs. Urban transport fares were down 4.4% 
and that he fell due to free travel periods introduced by the New South Wales and Tasmanian state governments within the quarter. Now, in fact, inflation was lowest in New South Wales at 5.3% and highest in Perth. The new journey purchases by owner-occupiers up 5.6% and shortages of building supplies and labour, high freight costs and ongoing high levels of construction activity continue to contribute to price rises for all new dwellings across all regions. The largest rises were recorded in Brisbane up 7%, Melbourne up 6.9% and Adelaide up 6%. Automotive fuel rose 4.2% and they rose due to those global sanctions on Russian oil plus the easing of COVID-19 restrictions. The largest rises were recorded in Darwin up 6.2%, followed by Canberra up 5.6% and Adelaide up 4.9%. Furniture was up 7% higher and they rose due to increased transport and manufacturing costs. The largest rises were recorded in Sydney up 8.9%, Hobart up 8.6% and Melbourne up 7.1%. And vegetables up 7.3% rose due to those heavy rains, flooding events in Queensland and New South Wales, damaging crops and farm infrastructure. But the largest rises were recorded in Darwin up 9%, Sydney up 7.7% and Melbourne up 7.7%. Childcare costs dropped 7.3%, partially offset those rises though, reflecting increased childcare subsidies for families with two or more children under the age of six, which commenced on the 7th of March and flowed through to this quarter. The largest fall was recorded in Sydney down 9.4%, as the New South Wales government's before and after school care vouchers further reduce out-of-pocket costs for families in Sydney. Now, underlying inflation measures reduce the impact of irregular or temporary price changes in the CPI, but it's a bit of a number wag, frankly. Never mind, trimmed mean inflation increased to 1.5% over the quarter and 4.9% over the year, and that, of course, is much higher than the RBA's 2-3% to target ban, so another fail there. The price of goods was up 8.4% and they continue to rise more strongly through the year than that of services up 3.3%. Annual trimmed mean inflation was the highest since the series commenced in 2003 and annual goods inflation was the highest since 1987 as the impacts of supply disruptions, rising shipping costs and other global and domestic inflationary factors flowed through to the economy, said the ABS. Now, Edwina MacDonald, the acting CEO of the Australian Council for Social Services, described the increase as absolutely devastating and crushing. We know that for people on low incomes, for the two or three million people surviving on less than $70 and many on $46 a day of the job seeker payment, they have been crushed by the increases. They are skipping meals and they have stopped using their car already. They are accessing food relief services at high numbers, much higher than pre-pandemic, and they are going to feel the increasing costs. And she said there needs to be a rise in income support so that people can afford to access basics. But Angela Jackson from Impact Economics, speaking on ABC News, said the figure has come in a bit below average. She says the market was expecting an increase around 6.3%. And we're still in this post-pandemic period where demand is very high where we have supply side constraints and inflation is here for the foreseeable future, Dr. Jackson says. Overall, while this is a bigger number, it is probably not that bad a number. Well, I suppose it depends on your perspective. And I'll just make three quick points. The first is, of course, we're still reporting inflation quarterly. This is a bit of an exception to the rule if you look around the world. I don't understand why we don't do it monthly. We should, absolutely, because this is a very lagged data. Secondly, the one-off adjustments like to childcare costs and to transport subsidies do have a significant impact in the overall movement. And of course, the headline number is the one that everybody listens to without understanding the parts that actually have gone in the other direction simply because of government intervention. Now, the third point, of course, is that we're still not really calculating the true cost of inflation, not least because housing costs aren't directly flowing into CPI and in fact the RBA has argued that if they did that it would be a circular argument because effectively the CPI would then drive interest rates that would drive the CPI. That I think is a specious argument. To my mind there is no reason why we shouldn't be including housing costs more directly as many other countries do. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.